get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, Quest Nutrition, RX Bar, and many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, anyone working with clients one-on-one, and they want to shift away from stop trading just time for dollars and shift to one-to-many client work. So go to rise25.com, learn more. You can down, download a free dream product letter, which is basically a business plan on one sheet of paper that helps you see gaps and untapped revenue. Companies like Disney, Apple, the sporting industries all use versions of the product ladder. Check out rise25.com. Today, I'm very excited. We have Nathan Hirsch, founder of Free Up. That's three E's up, which is a marketplace connecting business owners with the top 1% of freelancers. I can attest to that. I've uh, talked to several of them. They are top-notch people. Um, These 1% freelancers are in e-commerce, digital marketing, web development, and much more. They've helped companies like Payability, Shark, and many e-commerce companies with their staffing needs. Over the past 15 years, uh, Nate has built several successful multi-million dollar businesses. In 2006, he founded his first online venture out of a college dorm room, selling and buying student textbooks, and he was able to scale the e-commerce business, bootstrapping from $20 investment to over 30 million of sales on Amazon across a six-year period while serving over 10,000 customers. Nate is really focused on free up, and they've grown tremendously to over 5 million so far. Nate, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So what's been the hardest job to hire for? You know, like people have tried to find this this particular whatever skill and you finally cracked the nut and found someone. What's been what's been a hard one to hire for? Developers. I mean, developers are always going to be the hardest. Uh, they speak a different language. Uh, it's incredibly hard, even on their end, and giving them credit. There's a lot of great developers out there, even ones that work with me. But giving estimates, giving due dates it is really hard for them. And getting developers that can do that and communicate at a high level and break it down for someone like me that I don't know Node, I don't know JavaScript, um, is an incredibly hard thing to find. And, and when you find those people, you have to hang on to them. And it also requires some learning on on your end of the, from the client side because Connor and I, the way we deal with developers now is way different than we deal than we dealt with them back in the day. Um, everything from just breaking it down to not assuming things to to going over the business logic with them because a lot of times they, they don't have that business background. They're they're trying to code, so breaking stuff like that down for them very simply um, and, and really doing more than just saying, "Hey, I need an estimate. I need this done by this date." Giving them as much information as possible so they can give you informed information. So, but people can get developers on free up currently, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, your partner Connor and how do you divide up the roles with what you guys do? Sure. So, way back in the day, so Connor and I have a great relationship. Around year four or five, I, I think it's four or five, we started to step on each other's toes a little bit. Um, I made him the CEO of Portlight because um, I wanted to focus more on the operations, so I was the COO. Um, and once we did that, we kind of started to step on each other's toes. We didn't know who was doing what. We were giving employees and contractors just totally different messages. And we we found this activity online, and we sat out on my porch, and for an hour, we just went back and forth, hey, you're good at this, you're bad at this. Connor's like, you're bad at writing. I'm like, hey, you're bad at running Monday morning meetings. <laughs> and brutally honest with each other. Yeah. And at the end of it, we had this list of, pros and cons for each of us and we just realized that we overlapped each other so well and it worked out so nicely it was like i'm bad at writing he's a fantastic writer he wrote our book um so it's been ever since that it's been very easy to whenever something comes up we're like all right who should this go to and it's very natural we almost when we meet i had a meeting with him this morning we pick it up very quickly we're like these are the things you have to do you're taking this i'm taking this 
and we go forward. And I'm fortunate that I've been able to build that kind of business relationship. Yeah. So Nate, what was something he thought you were bad at, but you thought you were good at? Like writing would be an obvious one where, okay, yeah, I agree, but I'm sure there's some stuff you know, with my business partner, I'd be like, you know, he may say something. And most of the time I'll agree, but sometimes like, no, I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> um, so dealing with remote contractors and dealing with employees is way different. I used to have an office back in Orlando. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, I consider myself a personal person, I guess. But when it comes to business, like I'm very logical. I'm very like black and white. Like this is the way it's done. Remove the emotional element. And that doesn't always work when you have employees in the office. I mean, people have bad days. They've got family issues, a lot of stuff that I don't have to deal with on the VA side. But right. we used to have an office and something would go wrong or someone needed to be disciplined. Um, he did not think I was good at handling those because I'm a brutally honest person. They walk into the door for the meeting and I'm like, this is what you're doing wrong, X, Y, Z. And so in my mind, it's like I just told you the logic behind it, like go fix it, where he has a more personal approach. He's like, how are you doing? Like, let's get more information. Uh, you um, and I think my strategy works a lot better with VAs who, who are very focused on me and we kind of remove that, um, th those personal elements. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I'm listening to a book, um, Practice Perfect, and it talks exactly about this. Um, it, not that one approach was better than the other, but that – even your approach is good because you're specific and most people don't tell people what they're doing wrong. They just kind of let it slide until it builds up. So it's, uh, it's interesting. It's good. Yeah. Um, improving culture. Again, you're big on making sure culture is good, even with remote employees. What are some best Contract. practices people should think about? What's that? I'm sorry. Yes. Contractors. <laughs> yeah. So, it's funny. A lot of people, they, they fall into the habit. They, they find all these random people and they put them together and then they're like, all right, this is the culture. Let's build it. Where a much better strategy is you identify what you want your culture is on that spectrum. And then you add people in fit into that culture. And when you add someone that doesn't fit into that culture, it really ruins the culture for everyone. So half the battle is just getting those right people to begin with. And that's all that attitude portion that we talked about. Yeah. And then once you actually get those people into the culture and you get a bunch of similar minded people in that culture that you built, it's all about consistency and having that same message going from the top down. If Connor and I are talking to, if I'm talking to one person and Connor's talking to another person and we're giving them totally different vibes, totally different messages, it destroys the culture. We have to be on the same page going down from me to my internal team, to all the freelancers on the marketplace. And we have to hold people accountable to it. If, if someone's a really talented worker skill wise and, and they're destroying the culture, workers want to see that we're taking action. It doesn't mean we kick them out right away, but we're talking with them. We're making, we're doing everything possible to fix it and having that consistency where, Hey, this is the culture. This is the way it is. It's not optional. It's part of what we're doing. Um, really goes a long way to keeping it long term. Yeah. So Nate, this has been fantastic. I want to, I have two more questions, but I want to encourage everyone to check out freeup.com. It's F R three E's E E E U P.com. They have, I mean, I firsthand experienced, uh, just, just top notch people, individuals, like you're saying with the skill, the attitude and the communication, just top notch on all, all three. So thanks for what you guys do because you are taking a heavy weight off of business owners. You know, that we should be doing other things and, and leaving the professionals to do whatever it's advertising or web development or not try and, you know, do, um, you know, images that you're not trained to do type of thing. So thank you for that. Um, you know, since it's Inspired Insider, Nate, I always like to ask um, what's been a low moment with, with Free Up and then what's been a proud moment uh, with Free Up? So I'm fortunate with free up. I haven't had the same issue that I had with my Amazon store where I had to totally start over. Um, with a, the kind of the theme of the developers, where hiring developers is hard. Um, we have a developer, Russell. He's awesome. He worked with me uh, at Portlight, works with me on free up, um, built our entire software program. And uh, I think it was end of last year, beginning of this year, we had hired two to three developers and. We, we just realized that we had pretty much wasted three months of developing because 
the developers, they weren't working well together. The culture between them was awful. They were disagreeing on, on how everything should get done. Um, and, and with Connor and I, we're not developers. We don't really know who's right and who's wrong, which made it incredibly hard for us to, to get in the middle and break it down anyway. So it was like, all right, do we do we scrap it? Do we get rid of Russell, who's been a key with for us for a while? Um, do we hire an agency and pay top dollar? Do we go? Do we just start over and hire different freelancers? This was right. This was like right on the edge where freelance where free up was starting to get new developers. So we didn't have a lot of dev options in the right. network. Yet. Um, and that was kind of a low. So we, we ended up kind of going with our gut and we were like, all right, Russell's right. Like, let, let's kind of stick with him, even though we weren't a hundred percent sure we got rid of the other developers and we, we got Russell more involved on the recruitment process before we added new ones. Mm. And we look now and our dev team is rocking. They're crushing stuff out. Our software has never been better. Um, there's always ways to improve, but that was really that low moment where, I mean, we wasted thousands of dollars on these developers that, that we got very little. Yeah, you were mentioning, um, you know, managing that project is a huge task. Are there certain productivity tools you use? Um, I don't know, like people use Trello or Basecamp or Asana. What do you use to manage like these big projects or staff in general? Yeah, so I'm glad you mentioned that. I left that out. So we also got Jira. I always pronounce it. I think it's Jira or Jira. Yeah, I, yeah, I know what you're talking Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we started using that afterwards to keep everyone on the same page. And then we also hired a Filipino quality assurance manager that knew dev a little bit that would go through and test stuff that would, that they were in charge of Jira so that Connor and I didn't have to get involved in that at all. And it's never been better. It keeps everything organized. The devs know what's assigned to them. They know to pass things to, um, staging before to get tested, to go to production. Um, so that's really what we set up. Um, I use Trello for just personal day to day stuff. Um, I have it divided up between uh, long-term projects, short-term projects, podcasts I want to get on, influencers that I'm talking to and trying to close, um, and then just video ideas. I have a whole section for that that I throw in there and check off once I do them. Yeah. Um, and on the flip side, Nate, uh, proud moments. Yeah, so our goal going into this year was if we hit 5,000 hours filled in a week, we were going to celebrate and take a trip out to the Philippines to meet everyone. So mm. we hit 5,000 hours um, halfway through this year. We're actually, I'm hoping to break 10,000 hours this week. I'm, I'm going to look at the numbers um, after I get off this call with Congrats. you. Congrats, that's awesome. Thank you. It ends at 6 p.m. today, so we got two hours. Uh, but So we have a trip planned in March, and we got to celebrate with everyone, and it was just a proud moment. I mean, we built this from scratch with – um, no investment with an amazing group of people and just got to celebrate it with everyone. Yeah. Nate, I want to be the first one to thank you. It's been fantastic. Everyone should check out freeup.com with three E's. Anywhere else we should point people towards online to check out? Yeah, I mean, check out the Free Up blog. We post a lot of great hiring content there, even if you're not ready to hire just yet. Uh, right at the top of freeup.com is my calendar if you ever want to book a meeting with me. Um, and if you sign up and you mention this podcast, you get a dollar off your first worker forever. Nice. Um, Jeremy will have a, an affiliate link there. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm here to help. So feel free to reach so out. I'm pretty I guess last time. last thing, you know, Nate, um, who is, I mean, who is perfect to start using FreeUp? I know we talked about, you know, e-commerce people with different tasks. Do you want to expand on that at all? Who would be a good fit to start using your services? Yeah, I mean, business owners in general, obviously e-commerce, but we work with real estate agents and business coaches and even brick and mortar stores that are looking to build a website or hire a marketer. Um, agencies that constantly are, are contracting work out, um, we're a very quick source of talent, so we help people um, grow their agencies. And then just influencers, if you have your own base, not only can you hire workers for your business, but you can make a lot of money at our affiliate program by telling your community about it. We have great content we'd love to share um, with you, and we're on pace to pay out over $150,000 this year from our affiliate program. Well, yeah, because there's a lot of cool use cases um, when you go on with, obviously, various tasks uh, with e-commerce or just someone running their business. I mean, anyone needs accounting stuff, I would assume, so. There's very few businesses that can't benefit from hiring virtual assistants. Yeah. Nate, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, everyone check out freeup.com. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.